so welcome everyone to this video tutorial on data mining in today's class we will discuss what is cluster analysis conceptually meaningful groups of objects that share common characteristics play an important role in how people analyze and describe the world indeed we human beings are skilled at dividing objects into groups or clusters for example even relatively younger children can quickly label the objects in a photograph as building vehicle animals or plants etc so in the context of understanding the data clusters are potential classes and cluster analysis is the study of technique for automatically finding the classes so cluster analysis divides the data into groups or clusters that are meaningful and useful if meaningful groups are the goal then clusters should captures the natural structure of the data so def to define cluster analysis formally we can say that cluster analysis groups data objects based only on the information found in the data that describes the data objects and their relationship for example if we consider this data so we can say that this is the first division cluster this is the second division cluster this is the third division cluster if these are the students so this first division means is greater than 60% the per performance marks of the students percentage of the students is greater than 60% second division means is greater than 50% but less than 60% 60% or third division means is less than 50% so this particular informations are taken from the student itself okay so cluster analysis group the data based only on the information that is found in the data so the goal is that the objects within a group will be similar or to related to one another and different from or unrelated to the objects in the other group so the mean the meaning is that the cluster with the first division this particular students will be related to one another because they are having the common characteristics that their marks is greater than 60% but one student from this particular cluster will not be related to this particular student why because they do not share a common characteristics and they are uh, they are not related fine so it is believed that the greater the similarity or homogeneity within a group and the greater the difference between the group the better or more distinct the clustering is to have a better cluster we should try to minimize the distance within a group that means intra cluster distances should be minimized whenever distances should be minimized then the homogeneity or similarity will be increased but we have to increase the inter cluster distances so we have to maximize the inter cluster distance why because the groups are not related to e each other the clusters are not related to each other so to have a better clustering we should try to minimize the intra cluster distance or try to find the max maximum homogeneity within a group and try to maximize the inter cluster distance one more important thing you should know that clustering can be regarded as a form of classification in that it creates a labeling of objects with the cluster labels suppose this particular cluster has a label class first division second division and third division and it derives this levels only from the data so this informations are derived from the data itself so the clustering algorithm does not have any uh, predefined knowledge so cluster analysis is sometimes referred to as unsupervised classification be because it does not have any predefined knowledge on the cluster level fine so to see the application of clustering they have a variety of or many application of cluster analysis starting from biology from information retrieval climate control medicine like this so in biology biologists have applied clustering to analyze the large amount of genetic information that are available with them the world wide web consists of billions of web pages and the result of a query to a search engine can return a thousands of pages so clustering can be used to group the search results into a smaller number of clusters each of which captures a particular aspect of the query so in climate control cluster analysis has been applied to find patterns in the atmospheric pressure of polar regions and areas of oceans that have a significant impact on the land climate clustering algorithm has been used to identify different type of depressions also in case of medicine so we have seen that they have a 
variety of applications now we will see another thing is that whenever you are regarded clustering so clustering is in many application the notion of a clustering is not well defined so to better understand the difficulty of deciding what constitute a cluster consider this particular figure okay which shows 20 points 20 points and three different clusters okay three different ways of dividing them into clusters the shapes of the markers indicate the cluster membership so you can see that in the first thing we have six different six clusters we have divided this particular data into six different clusters here we we have divided the data into two different clusters and here if I, we have divided this data to four different clusters so what do i understand from here is that the same data can be divided into different clusters it's somebody can divide it into six clusters somebody can define define this 20 objects to two clusters only or some other algorithm can define this particular data to four clusters so notion of a clusters can be in are not clear or it is ambiguous so next we will see the types of clustering okay so the first types of clustering is known as partitional clustering or hierarchical clustering okay the this the partitional clustering is this the most commonly used clustering method in today's world okay so what is then a partition clustering is a simple division of the set of data objects into non overlapping subsets such that each data object is in exactly one class okay and in case of hierarchical clustering it is a set of nested clusters organized as a form of a hierarchical tree so if we permit clusters to have stuff clusters then we obtain a hierarchical clustering which is a set of nested clusters that are organized as the form of a tree as we can see in the diagram diagram so as you can see this is the original data so a partitional clustering will divide them into clusters non overlapping clusters non overlapping clusters means a particular object can belong to only one cluster okay but if you see hierarchical clustering you can have a the same data can have a nested cluster now see this is a sub cluster so this will be a nested cluster and generally represent in the form of a tree which is popularly known as dendrogram in data mining fine so this is known as your hierarchical clustering and partitional clustering next we will see what is exclusive and non-exclusive clustering so if you want to uh, have a look on the previous diagram that i have shown to you this so the, the clustering shown in these figures are all exclusive why because as they assign each objects to a single cluster okay but there are many situations in which a point could reasonably placed in more than one cluster and these situations are better addressed by non-exclusive clustering in most general senses an overlapping or non-exclusive clustering is used to reflect the fact that an object can simultaneously belong to more than one cluster at a time so this is known as exclusive uh, non-exclusive clustering okay so next we can see what is fuzzy clustering so in fuzzy clustering every objects belong to every cluster with a membership value weight that is between 0 and 1 so in other words clusters are treated as fuzzy sets for example a student can belong to a group of academics with a membership value of 0 0.7 and he can also belong to group of physically fit with a 0 0.3 so all the students can belong to all the groups with a membership value for example, another student can belong to a group of physical fitness with 0.9, but he can belong to the group of academic with 0.1. But you should remember that the summation, the summation should be weight must be sum to 1 always in case of fuzzy clustering. A partial clustering will assign only some data to some cluster while a, while a complete clustering assigns every data object to a cluster okay the motivation for a partial clustering is that some objects in a data set may not belong to a well defined groups many times objects in the data set may represent noise outliers address etc so hope you understand what are the different type of clusterings